2023 wish list. You know, I feel as though I'm a collector who's in a really good position, um, but I'm just going to change this position now. So the thing is, is that I feel as though I've gotten to a point where I'm actually really happy with my fragrance collection. I feel as though I've kind of, I've done everything that I wanted to do and I've got everything that I've ever wanted. And my aspirations with fragrance collecting weren't really that insane. I just wanted a good solid amount of fragrances for different seasons, for different periods, for different occasions. And I feel as though I've sort of got most of that now. Fragrance addiction and fragrance overconsumption and fragrance compulsion is a topic that does need to be highlighted. It's a topic that does need to be talked about, I think more in the community. Uh, but I'm not doing that today. I'm just talking about more consumption and more aspiration and ah, buy more fragrances. No, seriously, fragrance addiction and fragrance overconsumption is a serious matter. But I thought it would be fun to do a wish list. I did a wish list two years ago and I actually got, I'd say, I think four or five of those fragrances. Um, and some of the fragrances that I didn't get are repeated onto here. But it would, I think it's going to be fun to talk about, you know, a few fragrances uh, on here, some of which I've never talked about. And so here are the 10 fragrances that I'd like to buy this year. Number 10 is Chicago High from Wilhelm Perfumery. I keep hearing about this, um, this house a lot. I think that Morning Chess is supposed to be like a really intriguing version of Aventus, but I think I've got about four or five versions of Aventus in my collection. I don't think I'm interested, but but a lot of people have been talking about this house, and a lot of pe people have been talking, you know, good things about this house, and a lot of people who I respect have been talking about this house, such as Ashton from Jensen's, or as we know him, Fragrant Jesus. So Chicago High has got pretty much everything that I know that I like in, a, in an autumn and winter fragrance. It's got honey, it's got leather, it's got tobacco, it's sweet, it's got also vanilla, and vanilla is a predominant thing on this list as well. Lots of great things that um, I really, really enjoy. You have to get up very, very early out of bed to uh, make me interested in fragrances anymore. Like I said, I've I've smelled a lot over nearly 10 years of doing this, uh, but that one has piqued my interest. Again, honey is not something that I see a lot in uh, in fragrances anymore, so I'm very, very interested. In I want to know what, what's going on there. So, yeah, that is definitely something on the list. Number nine is Oud by Maison Francis Kojan, the original. I mentioned this in my last wish list. I still want this. I just... You know, I'm not made of money. You know what I mean? Like, they are so expensive for the Francisco Jans, and I think that a lot of them aren't really worth it. I think the Oud Satin Mood is worth it. I think it's one of the most unique and intriguing fragrances of all time. You know, that I love the uh, the Aqua Forte fragrance, the Aqua Liner, I think is uh, is, is really good. And, and I think that some of them are genuinely worth the money because they're, they're beautifully delicate, aqua, watery fragrances that I think are very difficult to do in the designer world. But uh, the Oud line is absolutely worth it in general. Oud Satin Mood, Oud Silk Mood, Oud Velvet Mood, they're all powerhouse, crazy, over-the-top Oud fragrances that are great. But the original Oud still gives me that robust, warm, sitting by a fireplace, not a gas fire though, but more like a wood fire. Um, with a few spices there, like, like it's a log cabin fragrance. It's a winter fire log cabin fragrance, and I, I really want to have that in my collection um, for autumn and winter, but it just sort of never comes up, you know? Like, it's always usually either, should I buy, sh should I pay the rent this month, or should I get who'd buy Francis Kojan? And the rent's usually gonna win that battle. One that won't break the bank, though, is um, Gentle uh, Givenchy Gentleman, Reserve Privé. I love that we've gotten to this point, lads, where like the names of fragrances are just ridiculous. Gentleman Reserve Privé. Can't wait for the flank to that one, which will be Gentleman Reserve Privé Elixir Cologne Sporté. Can't wait for that one. It's going to be great. But yeah, uh, Chris showed me this one. Actually, you can actually see my live reaction here. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, I like that line in general. I, I do like Gentleman Cologne. Um, I do like uh, uh, Eau de Boise very much. But this one has a great solid whiskey note that just makes it a little, that makes it warmer and more balsamic. I think that the sweetness in these fragrances, in these Givenchy Gentleman fragrances are, are very good very balanced, um, but that one just ups the sweetness a little bit, but not too much, not to the point where it's outrageous or anything like that. But this is very warming, very ambery, has that whiskey, which of course we all know that I love. So I'm really, really into that, really, really interested. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that'd be, uh, I think I'm probably gonna buy that one this year, hopefully. Next one, I still haven't bought Serge off Kobe, which I've always wanted to do. Just such a beautiful citrus fragrance. I still don't think I've ever really smelled anything like it. I think that it's one of the highest quality 
um, niche style fruity citrus fragrances ever again that one does break the bank it's a lot of money it's a little bit harder to get now which is only going to drive the price up further but i do want that one i do seriously uh want that one looks i'll never forget the moment i smelled it you know like that was a fragrance where i remember smelling it and going oh damn and i don't really get those experiences anymore to be honest. not to sound like a jaded old man of fragcom but i sort of feel as though i am becoming that and maybe i'm okay with that but again like not many fragrances these days just wow me just make me go oh my god I'm, i could could never have conceptualized that that's unbelievable you know it's harder to impress me but kobe by zerjoff is that really impressed me back in the day and i smelt it uh last year and it still you know blew my socks off one fragrance that did blow my socks off that's actually recent is um tom ford ebony fume i think that's what it's called that one was uh that one was a shock and not many people talk about it to be honest i think that like if i can be honest tom ford are just releasing sort of banger after banger after banger that like their their quality in releases in the past 10 years have been so high some people disagree with this don't listen to them right tom ford is ahead of the curve usually all the time at the moment it's like frightening how well they do and, and how brilliant they are i think that they are probably the best or if not like top three niche brands in the form of that they consistently release just great stuff and but it's kind of become a problem where you'll miss stuff out that they don't market properly and Ebony, Ebony Fume, I don't know how to pronounce this, Ebony Fume, when I smelled that, I was like, holy, holy fuck, like, that's amazing, really gargantuan, woody, ambery goodness, um, with a bit of oud, it, it's a lot of different, it's like, sort of like, summing up a genre, in a way, of this kind of oud sandalwoody kind of thing that's been going on for ages with the oriental oud spice uh, scent just put that into one and i was like my god the hype on this must be outrageous it must be insane nothing well not nothing it's a tom ford but not really anything to write home about so i'll see what i can do speaking of niche fragrances pegasus oh, whenever i say this ring i just think of jeremy pegasus it's not pegasus it's pegasus by parfums to Mali. I'm a sucker for vanilla. I smelt this in Harrods the other day that we have in Edinburgh, and I was like, oh, I don't remember that being that good. So yes, uh, I'm going to be trying to track that down. I mean, I've got Harrod, got Galloway. Uh, don't use Galloway as much as I thought I was gonna use it actually, um, but, the, but I, I know I could, I could definitely uh, use pegasus a lot okay three left let's get the shocking one out of the way this is going to be a bit of a shock for a few people i kind of really want to buy scandal by jean paul gautier look i mean i love my niches i love my um my crazy fragrances and the the next fragrance is completely and utterly out there and, and, and outrageous but i like to keep consistent with buying some easy to wear designer trash every now and then because it just keeps my options open and it's just if i'm honest i feel proud of jean paul gautier for actually releasing a fragrance that isn't a lamal flanker and isn't a complete disaster <laughs> you know um they've done it and they've been successful and and, and it's taken them so many years and i i kind of want to just buy it to support them you know to buy it to kind of go yes yes keep going don't just release Lamal, I want to say something ridiculous like Kilt Edition, but they've actually done that. They've actually released the Lamal Scuba Edition. Oh, wait, they've actually done that as well. They've released a ton of shit over the past two decades, but they're actually, you know, they're trying something and, and they've done well and, and it, it, it does seem to be doing well. And also, I hear, well, I, well I've smelled it before and I, I like it. I think it's great. A little bit similar to One Million Parfum, which I really like. And it's a people pleaser and it's casual and it's a bit trashy and if you don't like it and if you think oh jesus christ that's just generic shit completely understand but i like scandal hugo boss bottled parfum on the other hand that is shit and now it's something completely different Giki 2022 by slumber house well, one of the things i find sad about new school fragcom well actually there's there's a couple of things but one of the main things is um like niche fragrances really underground niche fragrances 
aren't talked about as much as maybe they should. Sebastian's always doing that that gig, or the or, or what's he called now? The perfume guy. The I don't know. Is he is he called Man Loves Cologne? Is he called Looking Felling Smelling Great? What is he called? Any? I'm just gonna call him Sebastian. He's like three strikes and you're out. I'm just gonna have to call you by your name. Sebastian is doing a lot of niche content and he does great with that and he's got a, a solid audience with that. But mainstream frag comp, which I don't really know if I'm a part of, to be honest. I'm just sort of out here doing whatever the fuck this is. We don't talk about niche as much, but let me tell you a tale. Summer House is one of the greatest houses ever. They're one of the most frustrating houses ever. I wanna say that but they have just like released some bangers and one of the greatest, if not their greatest fragrance that they have released was Jiki. And um, they discontinued it and it was amazing. The 2022 version I've actually heard from people is better. I don't know what that entails, but I wanna try it. I wanna smell it. I wanna savor it. Absolutely great. And the number one fragrance that I want to buy this year, that I will I will buy, it'll probably be on my spring list, it'll probably be very high on my spring list, is a fragrance that I feel as though I'm going to have to save from being discontinued, which I don't think it deserves it. Um, well, uh, just hear me out. Bulgari Man Terre Essence. Now look, when I smelt this, my first thought was, lads, you're making a Bulgari Man version of Tour de Hermes, and you are 20 years late to the game, but it kind of works, and I kind of respect that in a weird way. And it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. It's actually probably my... It's my second favourite from the Bulgari Man line. And uh, seriously, actually, wow, have I, have I just admitted that on camera? Yes, I, I love it. Um, but it's it's basically Tour de Hermes, and, you know, there's pros and cons to that. But I like it. I like it so, so much. I love it, actually. And when I smelled it for the first time, I was like, that's fantastic. It's it's such a ridiculous idea. It's probably a misguided idea. But I like it. I like it a lot. Um, the price, the, the retail price is, uh, I believe that the phrase is, are you having a giraffe, lads? £101 for 100ml. I mean, fuck off. But... I like it. I, I do like that fragrance a lot, and uh, but it, it, nobody really talks about it. I've heard a lot of bad reviews of it, and I feel as though I might have to just try and save it this year from being completely, you know, discontinued or something. But I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great and uh, wonderful. Next one is Amouage Interlude Black Iris. Still haven't got this. Um, I thought that I bought it, but I hadn't. I bought the original Amouage Interlude. I think it's fantastic. I love Miss Myris. I thought that the original Amouage interlude is it was great when it first came out. Now it's just kind of become like soot and coal. And I think it's just one dimensional these days. Still powerhouse, but a one dimensional powerhouse. But that Iris, and I've smelled it on Chris so many times, and it just smells great. It just smells absolutely fantastic. And so, yes, I. I will try and get that this year. Even if it's a 50 mil, I'm happy with that. Anyway, that was my wish list for 2023. Please comment below. Um, what your wish list is for this year uh thanks so much for uh watching and if you enjoyed this content subscribe for more fragrance content i will be now regularly uploading i promise i promise this time okay i'm the fragrance press thank you bye